Hello and welcome to the Nehati Stadium for match number 4 of the I League 23-24 season. It's time for Mohammedan Sporting to take on Aizol FC. As both sides look to start off their campaign here at Nehati with an important 3 points. Mohammedan Sporting have been trying to win the I League for a number of years. They came ever so close in 21-22 season but could only finish second. Last year it wasn't the best because they finished 8th. But can they get back to the top of the I-League this time round? Lots of good signings for the Black and White Brigade as we took a look at some of the jerseys that were in the dressing room and some of the players that will be donning those jerseys as well as Andre Chernyshov comes back to Mohammedan Sporting to guide them to what would be that first I-League title that they are chasing for the longest of times. We had a word with Andre Chernyshov as well before this all-important first encounter versus Aizol FC and he had a few words for us before the Black and White Brigade expect this uh, much uh, too long time uh, our team start to work in uh, uh, from July I came here in September this is uh, two months for me also long uh, long time and uh, we want to start to play this uh, I Liga we want to show nice uh, football uh, we want to make our supporters uh, uh, happy and uh, we try to fighting uh, for the title and on the other side, it is Azol FC from Mizoram, the People's Club, also champions of I-League in 2016-17, took the league by storm when they first came in. But since then, their highest finish has only been fifth in the 16, rather the 17-18 season. Last year, they came seventh and will be looking to move higher up the I-League table, can they get another I-League crown added to that wondrous year of 2016-17? I'm fine, very fine actually. But it's a little bit hot here, but it's, uh, I'm very fine. Now I think I have uh, seen Mohamedan a little bit on the video, but uh, they want to play football, we want also play football. And I think today we get a very exciting game for both sides. But uh, end of the day, I hope we win, of course. There is Ero Lakpe, the Dutch manager in charge of Azol FC this season. He said he's seen Mohamedin on video quite lately. But it's a whole different ball game when the Black and White Brigade are playing at home at Nahati Stadium with the faithful watching them on. This is how they line up. Padam Chetri from Kenkri starts in goal for Mohamedin Sporting this time round. They've got Kasimov, the Uzbekistan midfielder, and Prince Opaku from Ghana. Don't forget Alexis Naul Gomez, who lit the I League by storm last season. He also starts for Mohammedan Sporting. On the other hand, Hazel FC, with quite a few of their regulars still in the lineup. There is Augustine as well and Ivan Maric from Serbia will be starting. He is the only foreigner to start this game. They have a couple on the bench as well. Here are the substitutes to choose from. There is Gustavo Claudio De Silva for Aizol FC. But when they are starting, there is Maric at the back. Led by Lalmuan Tauma, which is Munez, as he's fondly known, and Joy Singh Monsang Tumli is the referee for today, assisted by Parveshwar Gope and Maria Tony, and Mohammad Juned Tanji is the fourth official as we embark on this new journey in the I League 23 24 season. We've had three enthralling games to start off with in 
this season. Just a few moments ago, we said goodbye to the Deccan Arena as Srinidhi Deccan won by four goals to nil convincingly over Neroka FC. But now, a different side from the Northeastern Azol will be trying to take the three points home as they make the journey to Mohammedan Sporting's home ground this time, Nehati Stadium. A lot of the faithful flocking in. And it is always a great atmosphere that they create wherever their side plays in and around Kolkata. As we wait for the teams to line up, it gives me a great honor to introduce my co-commentator who has been with me throughout these games. Welcome Rohit Ganguly and what would you expect from Mohammedan Sporting and Aizol FC this season? Thank you so much, Liam. First and foremost, a very good evening to all the viewers and a very good evening to you as well. Well, talking about Mohammedan FC, a team that blends, a team that confluences history and modernization, a team that blends youth and experience, a team that blends flair and brute force. To be honest, if you would ask what I would expect for Mohammedan F from Mohammedan FC, the answer would be I would expect top-notch brand of football they were absolutely sensational in Calcutta League and obviously they will try and replicate a similar form when it comes to the pinnacle of uh, leagues in India that's I league of course uh, obviously ISL takes the ace but below that I league is definitely a league to express your talent and it's really good to see the stands that are kind of chock-a-block at the moment the supporters coming in Sunday evening, what better way than to be here to try and show your support for your favourite team. Look at the tensed faces, even they will try or even they will hope that their team goes ahead and wins this fixture. It's been a while they have been at it. Like you pointed out that Mohammed and Sporting have been trying for a while now to try and clinch the I-League title. Maybe and just maybe this can be their very season and we all know what awaits at the other end. You become the champion, you step foot in the Indian Super League. Talking about which, the two teams walking out to the centre. The two teams who are all set to take Naihati Stadium by storm. Mohamed and walking out in their signature black and white stripes. Where an eyes all FC going ahead, permeating the flamboyance out on the other side in their signature reds. Oh, you can hear the excitement at Nehati Stadium as the sides walk out. It is a great atmosphere as these two teams who have been in the I-League for a while now will look to move up to the top. As you said, Mohammed and Sporting with a supremely impressive Calcutta Football League campaign brushing aside the likes of Mohan Bagan Supergiant and East Bengal and making it a hat-trick of Calcutta Football League titles with wins in 21, 22 and the 23 season. Their star, David, will be on the bench today for Mohammedan Sporting. 21 goals in the Calcutta Football League. Nobody touching him this season. And he also has been a part of Azol FC before this. So we will surely see him take the ground against his former side. One particular thing about uh, Mohammedan SC though, in the CFL campaign there were no foreign players allowed. So whatever strengths they had back then, alongside that they will be able to avail the services of Kasimov who's been a towering name. And at the same time Prince will be coming in. So will be Alexis Gomez from Argentina. So they will be getting some tremendous firepower up front and add to that the defensive solidity that will be provided by Joseph Adie. So this is going to be a complete unit. In the frame though, the team that will be attacking from the left to the right is going to be Mohamed and Sporting, wherein the team attacking from the right to the left is Aizol. Yeah, I think that's a fair point that you've noticed, or rather noted, Rohit. For Mohammed in Sporting in the CFL this season, no foreigners allowed, which actually really helped their cause because 
they were superb with the Indian talent that they recruited. Namely, it was Joseph and also David. But now, with the likes of Alexis, who was superb for Sudeva Delhi, it can only get better. And for eyes all on the other hand, when they start only Ivan Maric as a foreigner, very invested in local talent over the years have Aizol FC been and not much is going to change but they do have a few options on the bench as well there is Gustavo Claudio de Silva but apart from that it's up to Ivan to try and get things going for Aizol Ivan Maric he's somebody who can be an eye catcher, somebody who can really be the nexus of all the attention. So yes, for him, this is also going to be a very big game. The referee is all set, just ensuring the fact that everything is hunky-dory, all boxes are ticked before we eventually kick off. Having a closer look at the watch and... Uh, I was building up for the start, but it looks like I'll have to wait for a second as well. Nonetheless, and the crowd is absolutely raucous. Look at how they are cheering. Here we go. We are on the way, and it is Marvin and Sporting who gets us underway at the Naihati Stadium. Attacking on your frame from the left to the right in their signature black stripes is Mohammed and Sporting, the champions of Calcutta. Wherein attacking on your frame from the right to the left in their signature red stripes are the Highlanders. A quick foul here. And it looks like the captain of Mohammed and Samad Ali Malik, another experienced name in terms of Indian football. Yes, he was clipped from the back there. By Augustine, he couldn't keep himself in check. The first foul of the game. Early peggings there. Augustine just getting in between Samad, who, as you said, brings a lot of solidarity to this team as well. Is now also bearing the captain's arm, man. Moving down that right-hand side. Plays it inwards. That's a nice touch. Take it forward. Kasimov. And now, as you can hear, the movement is from Remsanga, puts it in. Good opportunity there, but it wasn't taken and then that shot, not the best. But good start from Mohamedan Sporting in the opening minutes. Moving down the right-hand side, Remsanga and Andre Chernyshov. It's good to have him back in the Mohamedan Sporting dugout, I'm sure. Well, the rousing crowd there tells you at how excited they are. They've waited for a long time to see their home team in action. Another cross coming in from the left, though it was uh, repelled away by Aizol FC. And at the moment, Mohamed and Sporting, they've started on a fairly good note. However, it won't be easy for Aizol FC as well to, or rather to break down the Aizol defence because they have a very good unit when it comes to making a rare guard. And since you pointed out early on, they are mainly focused on homegrown talent. Well, uh, that was a bit of a push involved and the referee quickly laying down the law, allowing a free kick uh, to Aizol FC that will be taken by their skipper, Munez. And just to trust on that point which you made about homegrown talent, there is someone who is wearing a black jersey who comes from Aizol, that is Rem Sangha, the number 20, 29. Played really well for Aizol for quite a few years, came through their youth system and then made a move to Rajasthan United. Now he dons the black and white of Mohamedan Sporting and they are bombing through the left-hand side as well. Not the best of clearances, another chance to cross for Zoding Liana. He's also made that switch. You were talking about... Uh a Highlander in the ranks of uh, Mormon Sporting. You know, if we scar through the Indian footballing excellence, the Northeast has provided us countless footballers. And uh, to name one of them is Baichung Bhutia. 
former Indian captain, former striker for India, somebody who redefined, revolutionized the game for India. So, of course, uh, Northeast has been the hub of countless Indian talents. Even now in the Indian team, if you take a closer look at Northeast contributions have been fairly good. Well, that was clearly a clip from behind once again. This time, though, it's Remsanga who was not able to keep him in check. And while trying to control Rempuya, yeah, that was clearly a clip. Yeah, Remsanga versus Rempuya, I think it's going to be a battle to remember. Taken forward now. A couple of fouls you've seen already. I don't think it's going to be that physical a game. But because both these sides are so quick, you will get small fouls here and there. So it's not going to be a lot of physicality and pushing and everything else. But you will see a quick clip here and there. And that's because both these sides are pretty quick. And something I'm really looking forward to is with the Dutch manager, how Ezol, well here he is in fact on cue, Erol Akbe, with the Dutch manager, how they can take this attacking flair and move it forward into actually getting goals because they've always played a good brand of football but they've just not been able to score as many as they would have liked over the years. Well, uh, if we follow the Dutch football trend across the globe, it'll probably tell you that there are two styles of football that the Dutchmen believe in. A closer look at one of the renowned Dutch clubs, the Hacks, I mean, they have been more focused on playing creative football and more importantly, harnessing youth. I think that is exactly what Erol also wants to do with Isol FC. Just bring in the young players into the mix. This looks like a decent attack. However, before he could try and get the ball into the field of play uh, and before he could be in a totally commandeering position, that went out. That was a nice run, to be honest, from Alexis. It's just that not pretty controlled though. However, it's going to be a throw in here in favour of uh, Mohamedan Sporting. They're quickly taken towards Alexis and played down by, I think it was Prince Opuku. And the foreigners will play a big role in this game for Mohamedan Sporting. Those two up front, there is Alexis again. He is super quick. Chance for him and he will have to settle for a corner, the first one of the game for the black and white brigade. And that gives an opportunity to their other foreigner, Joseph Adje from Ghana to make his way from the back line and probably go in for a bit of a header here. What can Alexis do? He's got three assists to his name in the previous I-League season for Sudeva Delhi. Doesn't put the ball into the box first time round. It is put in by someone else and it will be goal number one for Mohamed in Sporting. A bit of an error for the goalkeeper but the black and white brigade will not mind. And it looks like it is Samuel Lal Mwanpuya who has scored against his former side. We were getting to all the players who have donned the colours for Aizol. He does not celebrate. And I'm sure he didn't really expect a goal out of that. But Samuel strikes and Mohamed in Sporting make it 1-0. That was a sensational strike from Samuel. It felt like a fireball kind of driven through the hearts of the eyes all FC. Once again, a closer look at this. How nicely he receives that. Eventually, there was substantial power behind the ball that probably kind of forced an error from Van Lal Puya. And by the time he could leap onto that position and by the time he could get the gloves behind the ball, close that gap, the ball had already found the back of the net. Marvin and Sporting, that goal will tell you about their intent. That goal will tell you about the audacity, about the innovation that they come to the game with. Yes, a quick corner taken there by Alexis. That will be another assist for him. He's already got the ground running. But Samuel has been such a great player over the years in the I-League. We'll speak a bit more about him. But I as well have a bit of a chance here. Not taken down nicely by Rinzwala. Samuel played for Aizol. Did pretty well in the 21-22 season for them. Scored a goal outside the box as well for Aizol in that campaign. And has also been around for a while now. Shilong Lajong, Minerva Punjab. 
had a stint at KL of Blasters, Odisha, signed for ATK Mohan Bagan as well, but now finds his way to Mohammedan Sporting after. And he also gets his first goal against his former club, which will be quite special for him. That's a challenge that comes in. First time we've seen Mohammedan Sporting comfortable playing behind to the keeper as well, Padam Chetri. Well, once again, it's all about uh, complete football. I think Mohammedan Sporting would be very interested to play that brand of football where their entire team gets involved. And Abdul, in fact, Sa uh, Samad Ali Malik was the one who committed the foul there. The captain of the side, very experienced name, and most importantly, comes up with an ecstatic brand of football. And now, we are seeing Mohammedan Sporting in action from the left. They will take their time, eventually will play it all the way back uh, to their goalkeeper, Padam Chetri. Will be interesting to see how Padam Chetri lines up here. Had a couple of decent seasons for Kenkre. Very good shot stopper. And this is a good opportunity for him to make it up the ranks. Because Mohamed and Sporting have only one objective. And that is winning the I-League. They've had it since they've come back into the I-League when they won the qualifiers in 2020. Came so close in 2021-2022 season. Last year, of course, dropped down a bit. But with the signings that they've made, whether, whether it's foreigners or Indian firepower, it's definitely a season where we could see them finally getting that I-League title. A title which has been won and brought back to Kolkata quite a few times absolutely I mean uh, the two giants of Indian football who are now a part of the Indian Super League Mohan Bagan Super Giants in East Bengal they've done a phenomenal job in terms of enriching their history and uh, both the sides are also trying to bring forth their A game to the ISL but Mohammedan Sporting when it comes to representing Kolkata they are doing a phenomenal job in the I League as well maybe they have still they are still to touch the silverware, but with this kind of football, with a goal like that in place, maybe and just maybe this can be their year. However, this looks like a decent move here. Eyes all trying to build with those short passes. That is creative of them. However, they need to be a bit more accurate uh, when it comes to creating those passes. A good quick passing from them. That's a foul again. This time from the Uzbek Kasimov. Catching Joseph this time round. There are two Josephs in the game. One for Aizol. Joseph Lal Venhima. As we take a look at that foul again. And the other Joseph, of course, Joseph Ajay from Ghana, who's represented them at the under 20 level for Mohammedan Sporting now. Chance for a free kick. Amawiya takes it. That's a good one. Not the best of touches. Is that onside? It looks like it is. And out of nothing, Aizol get the equaliser. And there is a bit of a silence at Nehati Stadium. Out of nowhere, Aizol getting the all-important equaliser. It's 1-1 here. Well, parity has been restored. And the only reason for the same being is that both the teams were at it. Aizol knowing that they have to show urgency kept on coming forward in numbers and we were talking about those quick passes being played quick short crisp and they can work out wonders eventually it's from the free kick Amoya sends in a lovely free kick there wonderfully brought down and very cool and calm in getting the ball into the back of the net once again the finish that is absolutely impeccable there It looks like the goal finally came from the number 10, Mafela, also known as Lal Rinfela. There he is, getting there and getting the move finished. Hint of an offside, but we really don't know. It was very close, a bit of a push, but that will do a lot of confidence for Aizol because they didn't really create anything before that. Some good passes in the midfield. But eventually a nice move to finish it off. And here come Mohamedan Sporting again. Balls into the box. This time well dealt with by the Aizol defence. And lots of space down that right hand side for Remsanga. 
I think with that uh, equalizer, Aizol will be a lot more uh, enlivened, a lot more vibrant in terms of attack. There comes a long ball though, but comfortably headed away to safety by Mohamedan Sporting. But Aizol, suddenly after that goal, suddenly after that spell of play, they are looking a lot more livelier now. And uh, it seems like Mohamedan Sporting will have to be on their toes, their defence will have to be very alert. An iota of space and Aizol can come on their doors knocking. I tell you what, Rohit, it's only been 14 minutes in. But this is the fourth game of the I-League and I think it's going to be the quickest one. It's such a fast-paced game. We saw one similar last evening as Rem Sanga has a bit of space again. Good piece of defending there from the skipper of Aizol. We saw the game between Gokulam Kerala and Interkashi. It was quick. But this one has a bit of a rapidness to it. And we've seen that with a couple of early goals as well. And the best is yet, yet to come, I feel, from these two sides. Yes, the best is yet to come from these two sides, considering the kind of firepower that they come to the game. We're talking about firepower. One of them was in your frame. There comes a long range, though. However, completely off target. And you were talking about firepower, Liam. Of course, Sir Alexis Gomez is one of them who can really create a lot of difference for Mohamedan Sporting. Wherein, when it comes to Aizol, they also have some sensational local talents who can prove to be the bane for opposition. Nicely rested possession. However, slightly overpowered pass there goes out of play for a throw-in. Bit of a calmness to the game now. As Nehati Stadium is a lot calmer than they were a few minutes ago. We'll take another look at the players on the field. It's Padam Chetri in between the sticks. And lots of experience in that back line with the likes of Zodin, Liana and Joseph and the rest. Bit of space again. Remsanga will be up and down. And there is an overlap from Samad. A bit too much on that one. Challenge comes in. And he leaves it and asks for a corner and will get it. And Andre Chernyshov, just just respect, thinking of how those 15 minutes just whiz past here. And Alexis will be lining up another corner. The last time they had a corner, they scored. A bit of pressure on Vallal, the keeper. Alexis puts a decent ball in. And it should be cleared away. In fact, it could be a chance, but it's snuffed out there by Kasimov. I think uh, Andrei Shonishov, uh, he must be having his eyes on the side. Because, to be honest, despite starting the game on a very radiant note, somehow I feel that Mohamedan Sporting is slightly fizzling away. They'll have to be careful. I mean, the attacks have been there, yes. But when it comes to actually making an attack count, trying to create opportunities, trying to create space, Sama Mohamedan Sporting has used the wings well enough, but not precisely enough to get themselves back in the lead. However, Aizol has given the ball away cheaply, but they have also recovered possession as well. The crowd is demanding for a foul, but it never really looked like a foul. And Aizol can drive forward as well. That's something which will be a little tough for Joy Singh Thumli, the referee today. It's a fast game as we've alluded to. So it won't be easy to spot a few fouls. He's done well so far. Here come Mohamedan Sporting again. But not the best of balls forward. And now Ivan Maric plays it forward. It will be an airs all throw. Here they come again, trying to get something to the midfield. It would have opened up nicely, but good tracking back from Rem Sangha. Padam Chetri conceding a little too early into the season for his liking. But at Kenkre, they did concede quite a few goals, so he won't really be phased by that. There's Kasimov. There is a runner down the left. He doesn't use it. Now it's Ango. Plays it backwards. And I is all quite happy to just sit slightly deeper and let Mohamedan Sporting give away possession quite easily that time round. 
Very good turn. But the pass wasn't the best from Rempuya. I think that uh, goal from Aizol FC, that goal from Mafela, that has somewhat uh, changed the complexion. Marvin and Sporting is still coming on the attack, still coming on the prowl. But the kind of uh, incision that they had initially, that incision is somewhat being blunt now. They are trying to get something on the brakes. That could have been a better ball. The runner was there onto that far right. Unfortunately, he never really get, got that opportunity. Nice short balls that are being played by Aizol. And now it has been steered down that right. Again, comfortably steered into that central channel. Does well to control it. And now trying to bomb forward all the way from the right. Will eventually get in a throw in there. Aizol slowly building pressure. This is where Aizol is so dangerous. They will be coming at you very subtly. It was uh, Amoya once again. The man who crafted that free kick. It's a long chase for Mohamed and Sporting. But Van Lal Riyad Puya. He's out of his line. To comfortably stave the danger away. A good move from the keeper there. Van Lal. Wants to get more involved after making that... Mistake allowing Samuel to score. A bit of an opening there for Aizol, but somehow Mohammedan Sporting have managed to get it away. And until that goal, Aizol did not open them up. They haven't opened them up since. It just goes to show that if you have even half a chance, you can make the opponents pay. And here come Mohammedan Sporting. Angu again. Down the left. Doesn't have too much of an option. And now Alexis plays it through. Decent ball. And it's very important to see how Prince and Alexis will combine, especially against this man, Ivan. That combination is very, very crucial because ideally, if, you're, if that combination, particularly when it comes to making in, when it comes to injecting pace and speed uh, into the mix, even some shooting flair as well, it is that combination that creates all sorts of trouble for your opposition. Remsanga on the ball and uh, eventually he sends it into that central channel. Yeah, we were speaking about Srinidhi Deccan and their front three, how well they play together, especially the foreigners. So that's something that Mohammedan Sporting will like to do. They've had a few foreigners who've played well in the past. Here is Alexis. Could not get the better of the eye of the eyes all defenders there. And he wants to take the throw in as well himself. Kasimov. Lots of space for Samad. Thinks of a shot. Not the worst of shots. But could have been better as well. We have seen uh, Samad Ali Malik converting from that range earlier. Particularly when it comes to Mohamed and Sporting. They have this uh, proclivity for going from range. So you will see a few shots like that. Particularly when... Aizol FC will come blocking. I mean, of course, after a certain point in time, Aizol will realize that it's time to close down the defense completely. Maybe get a few numbers down. So, at that point in time, it is going to be these long rangers from the likes of Samad Ali Malik, Zoding Liana, if needed, Alexis Gomez as well, which can try and throw them into trouble. Almost halfway through this first half, that will be a foul against Kasimov. Well, in fact, it's it's given as a throw, it's not a foul. Kasimov thought it was, not really saying too much to the ref. Mafela, I think that was a foul, but it's been given as a throw. In fact, it's been given as a foul against Kasimov. So, referee saw something we didn't, maybe the handball. Nice turn. And there's all now for the first time just keeping a bit of possession in the Mohammedan Sporting half. And now they've given it away and this is a chance for a counter attack. Alexis, wonderful ball or rather wonderful thought but the execution just wasn't up to the mark. And again, as all have given the ball away. This is not really impressive from them. Remsanga. Has a chance to cross. And that's a very good delivery. And how about that from the Serbian? He got on the end of it there, Ivan Maric. 
but I think Prince was guiding that towards the far corner. Sensational opportunity once again. Nicely done by Remsanga. That was a probing cross. Only if he could have kept it. In fact, he could have latched onto it rather. And this is another corner. Alexis takes another one on the ground, trying to create another potential goal scoring cross. Maybe there it comes. Oh, could have been a goal at the far post as well. But then it lacked direction. Eventually, it lacked a curl as well towards the dying embers of it. Having watched a lot of I eyes all games in the I League, something that they struggle with sometimes is balls into the box. And you can see there's a bit of helter skelter every time there is a ball into the box. That's why someone like Ivan Maric has been brought in. That's why he is starting, but he can't be everywhere. And that is why the more balls into the box are played, then the rest of the eyes all defense can be tested. And at the same time, when we talk about Alexis, he's one of those prolific goal scorers who can be really a threat. Particularly when he played for Sudeva Delhi, he scored 8 goals from 11 games. So it tells you so much about the kind of prolific attacking flair that he comes to the mix with. And here is Aizal again moving forward. That's a good ball in. This could be a chance. Definitely not a penalty. Samad got there just in time. And it could have been number two out of nowhere for Aizal. They will get a corner. The touch was from Rinzwala. He almost set it up for himself. Let's take another look at it. Samad just got there in time. Snuffed out the danger. But the second touch was definitely going to be one on goal. And Samad just says, don't worry, I'm there. The warning peals are ringing louder than ever. It's going to be a corner here for Aizol. And they flip it into the traffic at the far post, but not really a controlled header. It eventually goes out of play. A decent opportunity there for Amawia. It is, was his delivery that led to the first goal. Just a bit too high for him. But Aizol now just getting into this slowly. Mohammed and Sporting have got to be careful of the pace at which Aizol attack. It's quite expected for Mohammed to keep more of the ball as this game progresses. I think uh, even their coach, Andre Shanishov, will also like to have a word. I think he's just urging his defence to be slightly more vigilant and be allowed and be alert about the opportunities. Because Mohamedan is a team that plays the ball on the ground mostly, except for those long rangers that will somewhat startle you. Remsanga on the right once again, now trying to cut back in. In fact, goes a fair bit of stretch. However, the possession remains at the feet of Mohamedan Sporting. It was Kasimov. And I just saw the frustrated figure of Prince. He's not had too much of the ball. That's another good delivery. And that's where Prince comes to the table it was too high for him but when Remsanga tried to find him he just had a bit of annoyance because not, the, not that the pass wasn't good just that the ball didn't come to him there is where he can get involved and it was a bit too high for him great chance though and in fact it is number two for Mohamed and Sporting as we were showing you the replay of one chance they created another and it's Alexis Gomez who opens his account in the I-League 23-24 season. All smiles in Nahati Stadium and celebrations all around. They're taking pictures like it's a party and it's a party in Nahati. Well, absolutely. Why not? Look at the crowd. Look at the players. They know the importance of this goal. That is an imperative strike. And most importantly, talking about the dynamics of the game. Yeah, this is how the second goal was scored. That's another cheap giveaway there by Aizol FC. And he was never going to miss it from point-blank range. Alexis Nahuel Gomez, remember the name. He is one of the sensations. And in fact, he's one of those Argentine sensations that Indian football will remember for a while. Oh Yes, everybody remembers an Argentine who wears the number 10. And... He gets on the score sheet, Alexis Gomez. 
And what a time to do so. Just when you felt that Aizol were getting into it. That's a poor challenge. But no foul, says the referee. As it looked to be August, Augustine who went down. Augustine, I beg your pardon. And a very nice assist from Angu as we see that. He definitely caught him, but I think he went down a little too late on that occasion. Detol with that challenge also had a very good stint in the Calcutta Football League. The number three from Mohammedan Sporting. Well, that's given away by Samad, and you can hear the groans at Nehati Stadium. They love their football in Kolkata. And every time there is a bit of, mis of a mistake, they will make it known. There is Joseph, cuts inside, sets it off. A bit of a foul and a foul in a dangerous area from Kasimov. This is another chance for Aizol from a set piece again. And a set piece from a very good position. Very nicely cut in and then a proper pass as well. This is where Aizol can be extremely dangerous. They are a very creative side, so even for a moment, if you're planning to write them off, it can be very, very dangerous. It was Ramsanga who was trying to go forward and now it's going to be a test for Padam Chetri because it looks like it's going to be Amoya once again with that free kick. The man who engineered that opening goal will, of course, look to try and restore parity once again. But in for Mormon and Sporting, they will have to stall this at all costs. Big time and a big chance here for Azol. Not much possession, but the number seven stands over it, takes a bit of a deep breath. Tamawya just over the top. Padam Chetri looks like he had it covered, but a decent attempt. And again, a set piece would have been the way Azol would have got the goal. But now looking back on it, slightly too high for his liking. The roar in the stands will tell you that the Kolkata crowd, they appreciate football. I mean, even it was uh, Aizol's free kick, but they didn't care. They were all in. They were hoping that maybe and just maybe they could have seen a world-class sensation. And now Mamadan Sporting on the break. However, very well done there by Van Lal Riyadpuya. Quickly out of the line, realizing the fact that if he delays to reach the ball, it can be further catastrophe for Aizol. They've given it away again here, Aizol. Here's Prince. Plays it wide to Gomez. But that's a good challenge from Mafela. And they're giving away possession a little too easily. You would have thought that they would have learned from their mistakes, Aizol FC. Well, to be honest, uh, Aizol's attacking unit has been very well oiled and very slick. When it comes to defence, things like that have been common though. Once again, a lovely shot coming in. This time though, Van Lal Riyad Puya, extremely alert, collects it without breaking a sweat. Yeah, Alexis Gomez once again, picking up the ball, moving forward, putting it into a dangerous channel. Samuel was there, he was hoping for a bit of a touch. Now possession given away to Aizol. Here's Joseph, Remsanga will try to track him. Augustine goes down, there was not much in it. He's going down a little too easily for the referee's liking. Well, uh, you'll also have to understand, it's understandable, there was a bit of push be from behind. But once again, the referees have seen enough of battles to realize that pushes like that hardly budges a fly. Talk about a fall, a free kick will never be given there. And nonetheless, now the possession is back at Mohamedan Sporting. It was the captain a few moments ago. And now they are happy to just sit back and play those short passes. Eventually steer it forward. Can he spot the run on the left? He does. Looks like another cross may come in. However, a very emasculated effort in the end. Comfortably dealt with by Aizol. But not really well cleared. Marvin and Sporting keeps on knocking on the doors again. There comes another cross. Can be a goal scoring chance. However, that has been dragged wide. Sensational opportunity for Rem Sangha. What a chance for Rem Sangha. It looks like 
All the former Isol boys want to get on the score sheet. He was far too open. Joseph allowing him that opportunity to get free. And Alexis Gomez puts that on a platter for him. But eventually Joseph just came back at the right time. Ramsanga is cooking up a storm on that right hand side. And let's not get started about Alexis Gomez. Loses that battle. But wins more than he loses, that's for sure. Already a goal and an assist to start off his campaign. That's a good try from Remsanga, who found himself towards the centre of the pitch that time. And we really haven't seen Prince Opoku. And once he gets involved, Rohit, then you would see the entirety of this Mohammedan sporting front line. You talked about entirety, believe me, there is still the likes of uh, Mohammed Ashad uh, to come in. There's the likes of David Hamar. So, to see their entirety, we'll have to wait for a while. They've got an AD Gabriel Hernandez as well. So, and Sheikh Fayaz, another sensational talent. So, believe me, that entirety, I think it'll take almost four, three to four games in I-League to witness that what they bring to the table. This is a very good, a very talented Mohammedan side. And now they come from the left, looking for space, looking for help as well. Prince finally comes into the action. However, that isn't the most princely of uh, shots that you would look from him. Uh, it looks like it's smashed someone on the head, I think. It is the big Serbian who goes down. Ivan Maric needs a bit of attention as we take another look at it it was a bit too far for Alexis Prince smashes it straight in the head of the Serbian that will be a tough one to recover from oh Prince uh, doesn't really mince words he means business and I believe that he's someone <laughs> who's more of a poacher he's more of a predator up front so you give him anything you feed him the ball and you let him do the talking look at these stands uh, these this crowd they are excited they are happy to be here on a sunday evening cheering for their favorite team and believe me when i talk about supporting their teams they have come a long way from kolkata so yes uh, noihati may be in the vicinity of the city but once again not exactly in the heart of it so people they don't mind traveling all this distance all they want to do is just cheer for their team and that is all that matters to them oh yes and the snacks are out so is the tea and that is the vibe that you get in kolkata no matter if it's a three o'clock kickoff in the cfl or if it's a seven or eight o'clock kickoff in nohati stadium which is an hour away from kolkata fans will flock in attendance and having experienced firsthand a few of the matches in the Mohammedan sporting ground during the CFL, it is an electric atmosphere. And that will be a foul right in front of the referee. Too many of those, in fact, in this game. Remsanga on Augustine. This time he finally gets a foul given by the ref. Not the best of ones. And I'm not sure when the first yellow card will come out, but I think once it does, then these challenges will stop. Although he was going for the ball. I believe the referee is just trying to be lenient here. Again, like uh, all the referees, they have different styles of uh, administering the game. They have different styles of arbitrating the proceedings. So maybe in this case here, I believe uh, Joyshing Monchang Tomli is just trying to be slightly lenient, give that expressive space to the players. Aizol now latches on to it and now steers it into that central channel, does well to control it. Now to the far left, eventually threads it forward. A nice first touch but eventually at the end of the day, it looks like Joseph Adye, a very towering figure. He'll bring it all to the use and let it slide. Well, that was great from Joseph. Haven't seen him in action too much. But look at the comparison in size. Oh, there's a bit of a lash out there. That's what the referee was talking about from Rinzwala. Got to be careful. And that's what Joseph will bring to the table for Mohammedan Sporting. As I've said, 
in that stellar campaign of theirs in 21-22 where they came ever so close to that I-League title. Mohamedan Sporting had the likes of Marcus Joseph and Shahir Shaheen and Nikola Stojanovic who led them so far into the league. Of course, Andrei Chernyshov was at the helm of it all. And again, you get the sense as we see this ball played in should be left alone by Padam Chetri. Again, seeing not even one half of football, Rohit, you get the sense that this year they've also got the foreigners that can do the job, which is ever so important. Absolutely. I mean, when you're getting a foreigner, there are a few particular skill sets that you're looking forward to. Nice uh, high press there from Aizol. And Mohamedan Sporting doing well to clear their lines. And I think Aizol will have to continue doing this. Because if they can keep on pressing. Now, so far, Mohamedan's defence has not really been tested that frequently. Yes, it has been tested. This can be a decent chance. Nice forward ball coming in. Could have been a goal-scoring opportunity. But then, it looks like the final touch came off. A Mohamedan Sporting player and it's going to be a corner here for Aizol FC. That was a brilliant piece of work. Yeah, decent ball through. But eventually, it was a challenge from a Mohamedan Sporting player, Zoding Liana, who has played for Aizol, of course, but didn't want to score an own goal, I'm sure. As we approach the 40th minute, a chance for Aizol again via a set piece that has been the best way for them to try and get a goal so far. They've got one. And set pieces are where they are trying to target this Mohamedan Sporting side. That's been missed by Ramsanga. But now a lot of open space. This pass was eventually not taken. I got a bit excited there for the counter-attack, but in hindsight, they're just keeping possession now. Yeah, I was excited too, and so was the crowd as well. They were hoping that they will quickly steer it forward. But once again, you know, with uh, modern-day football, with the football analysts, with uh, everybody coming into the frame, a lot of things matter. This can be a good attack here for Mohamedan Sporting, trying to use the central channel. That happened right in front of the referee's eyes, and he was very quick to spot it there. Free kick uh, has been given, and it looks like it's Samuel Lalmuan Puya who's gone down. He was the goal scorer in that first instance. Let me tell you something about Samuel. He will be itching to take this free kick. He might be parried away by his fellow teammates. As you can see, he gets up, takes a look at the ball. But I think it's going to be one of the others who are around. Good luck pushing away Alexis Gomez from that particular discussion. Samuel now does get into it. And the Chernyshov may be deciding who can take it. It's taken short, in fact, and Mohamedan Sporting almost catching all of us off guard. I think, uh, you know, these are wonderful signs. I mean, if you have, you already have prolific shooters in your side. Add to that a sensational Indian talent who will, who can bring or who can create significant differences you know this is like uh, kind of a very predominant theme altogether no matter how many good foreigners you're getting it's your Indian base that actually carves the history for you so it's very important because ideally the majority of your team is Indian and if you have these local talents coming in and who are very young they can play a very crucial role in forging the future of your team as well Oh, I definitely agree with that one, Rohit. As Alexis was shaping up for a shot, went for the pass, and now another shot, but it's straight into the Nahati stands from Angu, who apologizes. But that's fine, and getting back to your point, it's so important to have an Indian crux of players who are so good. We've seen that at the Indian Super League level as well, where Mohan Bagan Super Giant have so many of... Indian starters and they just keep getting them in and the same with Punjab FC last season it was their Indian talent that got them far of course the foreigners were also good and that is why a lot of these players are getting players who have not only played really well across their state leagues but with a bit of I league experience and that is why a lot of the eyes all players have gone to Mohammedan Sporting because they've played in the I-League before. That is 
a bit of a miss pass and he should get it back a miss pass on either side and now joseph plays it back padam chetri is not going to take any chances that could have been far better actually i believe that short pass that was being crafted it was very emaciated and nonetheless now mohammedan sporting they are on the break as well and whenever they have come knocking on the doors those gentle subtle taps have turned into loud batterings a few moments later and now prince threads it towards the far right and a brilliant piece of footwork but eventually trying to get past three defenders is never going to be easy and despite a result in shot coming in vanlal uh, vanlal ruat puya is going to be central to that save so it's like an easy picking for him as well into the final minute we go of the first half three shots on tar on target for mohammedan sporting a lot of space here again for samad who puts in a good ball towards the second post but there is a red shirt there and then it will be launched long by mafela into the space that's actually a very nice ball for him into amawia important touch there from the likes of zoding liana or also known as adinga and how about that for a ball from alexis gomez and how about that for a first time ball they're really turning it on here mohammed in sporting well just before they head to the tunnel 3 minutes of additional time it is going to be so just before they head to the tunnel they just want to ensure the fact that they are trying to have that clarion clarion call blown once again stun eyes all if at this point in time if they can and uh, this is like a very good shot uh, like this is a very good opportunity coming all the way from the right there comes the cross it eludes everyone though could have been a sensational chance however the danger is still not over mohammedan sporting now samad coming all the way from the right plays it down the central channel yeah they've looked very good down the left and right wing they have mohammedan sporting there's a bit of a structure to their attack of course they can't go down the wing all the time when they do cut inside then there are a couple of passes that they have but in terms of the same for isol it's not been too much of a structure of course it's so important to note that andre chernishov has been in charge of mohammedan sporting before he's come back now and I think that is the right decision from them to get him back because he knows exactly what it takes to take them towards the top of that I league and especially with this bunch of players here they come again Samuel plays it backwards and they're doing so well to hold on to possession Eyes all now trying to chase but I think at the moment all they are doing is chasing ghosts and windmills where in Mohammedan sporting they look to be in total control of the game the score line may be very close but if you actually take a closer look at how they have attacked how they have poured forward in numbers that has been absolutely sensational there's another long ball mohammedan sporting trying desperately to latch on to that kind of a body shielding attempt there from ivan however eventually at the end of it all it will go down in history as a free kick uh, in favor of isol fc Yes a constant tussle but eventually it was Ivan who managed to get it in his favor. Yeah, that's what he brings to the table the big Serbian with a huge stature as well. And he's done well in this first half. He's played for a number of clubs in Asia and Europe. And now finally plays his trade for Isol FC Mohammedan Sporting now trying to get one last roll of the dice trying to use the left wing in their favor if they can plays it back to the midfield oh that was a nice attempt a fine drive there from Isol FC and can they get a rodeo that goes in their favor as well kind of a desperation creeping in but decent work done by padam chetri once again 
as uh, we cross the three minute mark Padam Chetri coming out of his line eventually that is how we will finish things at the end of first half Morgan and Sporting leading by two goals to one Lalmuan Puya and Gomez scoring the goals for them wherein for Aizol FC it is K. Lalrin Fela who found the back of the net An intriguing first half of action between these two sides who are battling it out here in Nahati for the three points, three goals to start off this matchup as we take a look at the stats. And it's Mohammedan Sporting with the bulk of the ball, 66% possession, eight shots and three of those on target, two shots from Aizol, one on target, which was also a goal, seven fouls from the black and white brigade and two from the side in red no yellow cards yet and three corners to two to Mohammedan Sporting and no offsides as well and uh, that's how the shots have panned out for Mohammedan Sporting each shot so far from the first half Samuel Lalwan Puya scored a goal and then W Luang as well Gomez uh, he was sensational scored a goal and took one shot as well and then Kasimov taking one from the range. Lalrim Sangha, he's been instrumental in that right wing. Samad Ali Malik trying his luck from distance. And then Prince eventually coming and hammering the face of an Aizol player. Just those couple of shots from Aizol there. One of them, the goal from Lalton Moia. And then K. Lalrim Fella trying to go for that long ranger. That was the free kick. Seven fouls from Mohammed in Sporting. Kasimov, that midfield general, just making a couple of fouls here and there. Remsanga with three. And Angusana as well with one of those. Two fouls from Aizol. R Ramsanga and Lal Rochna with one each. Both these teams have really played... An excellent half of football. Aizol may have to up the ante slightly more once they take the yard in the second half. We'll now quickly take you through the highlights of that first half. Both the teams took the game by the storm. It was Prince that got us underway. And eventually Marvel and Sporting was into action straight away. That was that opening goal. A stunning strike from range by Samuel. Powering it through the goalkeeper's gloves and uh, didn't really celebrate. But then Aizol <coughs> restoring parity. A very cheeky finish to be honest but a sensational free kick there from Amoya. Cool, calm, composed and right on target. But once again, the Mormon and Sporting, they were not willing to be kept silent. Yeah, and they kept going. That was a good interception from Ima, Ivan. Azol almost got another chance, but Samad was there to rescue them. This was a big problem for Azol as it set up goal number two for Mohammed in Sporting. An assist for Angu and the first goal of the season for Alexis Gomez as Mohammed in Sporting finished off this first half. That is how it stands at Nehati Stadium. It's 2-1 to Mohamed in Sporting at half-time versus Aizol who will need to come back into this game if they want three points. We'll slip into a short break and come back after this for second half action.
Welcome back to Nehati Stadium in what has been a grand encounter in match number 4 of the I-League season 23-24 as all trailing by 2 goals to 1 versus a Mohammedan sporting side who have been dominant here in Nehati and what do you think must be going on in that team talk Rohit well, I believe uh, they'll just try and control the game. That's it. I mean, like we said yesterday, get the rudimentaries right. See, to be honest, if you take a closer look at Izol's game, they have done a sensational work of going forward in attacks. They may not have opened up the Mohammedan defence that frequently, but they have done well in terms of attack. But when it comes to the defensive solidity, the defensive integrity has been utterly in shambles for Izol. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. They've got to be defensively solid. Midfield has to get a bit more involved and attack. Uh, well, their attack is good. For sure. And we're off in the second half at Nahati. Eyes all looking to get back into this game as you can see Samuel and Alexis Gomez on the score sheet for Mohammed in Sporting. Lalrin Fella on the score sheet for Eyes all who scored from a set piece, created many chances from a set piece. In the second half, Rohit, they'll be banking on a bit of open play as well. Once again, uh, Liam, to be honest, I believe if you want to create something from open play, you have to be a bit more commandeering in the midfield that we have been repeatedly talking about. Maybe just get someone who can hold the ball. That is why holding midfielders get very central to the game. I think that's a fair point. They've not had that kind of a player to just hold on to it, like say a Kasimov, who's just won the ball back again. He holds the game, makes, breaks up the play and also just moves it forward to the likes of the wingers or even the strikers up top as we take a look at the lineups once again no changes from either side so it remains the same here come eyes all trying to move forward but Alexis does well a bit of hold up play and that is what we were looking for a combination between the two foreigners up top here is Alexis plays it forward and just a loose pass otherwise Mohamedin were through on goal again well, Mohamedan has, been, has time and time again been knocking on the doors and they're just hoping that they can keep on compounding those attacks. Coming all the way from the right is Lalim Sangha who sends the ball back and now once again this has been, this is exactly where Mohamedan has dominated the game. The composure, the short passes, it's not that they have ever been in haste. Whenever they have taken those short passes, making it crisp, trying to keep that shape of them intact. That's clearly, will look like a foul, but it looks like Aizol now can be on the break. That's a nice run spotted onto the left. Can they keep the possession? However, very poor work, to be honest. And uh, you won't need, or you don't need a separate invitation for Joseph to come out. He's very alert, he's very vigilant. And good work by Prince as well. A lot more involved. Alexis puts that ball out because it looks like Kasimov has stayed down. For a change, it was him on the receiving end of a foul and it almost broke very kindly there for Azol, but they just couldn't make the most of it. Kasimov should be okay. Oh, that was quite light, but you can understand why he went down because it was just a bit of a stamp on his foot. Ideally, whenever uh, there is a stamp in play, I think the referees are forced to call it a foul because it can be very agonizing and uh, look at these fans look at how uh, they have just braved all odds they've been here in the stands just to cheer for their team and the chants are getting louder the drums are getting louder in the stands it is absolutely sensational as well 
Yes, so it's always a great environment created by the fans, no matter where you go. We saw it at Srinagar yesterday for Real Kashmir. Then, of course, at Gokulam Kerala, there were a lot of fans in attendance. Same can be said about the Deccan Arena. And, of course, in Kolkata, they are football crazy. On the day where India is playing a Cricket World Cup match, if people want to know how football crazy Indians are, then you can take a look. Very rightly pointed out, India is playing a crucial match against England, but look at how these crowds, for them, what matters is their favourite club is in action. And they are in I-League, so of course, as we talked about, that they have been very good in terms of form. That's a nice long ball here, Mohamedan trying to keep it in play. The referee giving away a free kick in favour of Aizol here. Or it looks like the flag's gone up actually at the far end. Looked quite tight there. Good run from Prince. Getting a bit more space. Um, but it will be deemed offside. It's been better from him in the second half. Perhaps Andre Chernyshov just told him to get a bit more involved. Drop deep slightly more. Now he gets the ball at his feet. Plays it out nicely. That's a nice ball towards Alexis. Who goes for the dink, but I think should have just put his boot through it. Here's Samuel again. Loses out, but then Samad will come forward. And when he goes for the cross, a bit of cheers come through. He's a local lad, so he won't really mind that. He's been there for a while, actually, and uh, he's once again a very experienced meme. The best part about Samad is the kind of workload that he takes. It looks like it's going to be a change that will be introduced uh, for Aizol. It's uh, KC Valpuya who will be coming in, wherein Augustine Lalrochana will be going out. So KC Valpuya will have to play a crucial role here for his team as well. He's being introduced for a reason. And of course, his team will be hoping that maybe and just maybe he can be put to good use there. A bit of a foul there from Kasimov. Maybe a bit of redemption after he went down. That's the fourth foul now for the Uzbek. Got to be careful not to go into the books. And that is a challenge coming in from Alexis Gomez as well. They're riding a tight line here in Mohamedan Sporting when it comes to the challenges. But that's a good pass towards Prince who holds it up slightly. Alexis again. And now they... Try to work it out via the right hand side. Samad to Remsanga. Samuel is there if he wants a bit of help. Remsanga decides to take it himself. That's a good ball, and Prince is denied by a sensational save by Van Lal Triatipuya. What a save! Absolutely sensational indeed. Look at how he threw his body, and that too in the fraction of a second. Those instincts uh, from Riyak Puya saving eyes all in this case. But look at that cross. Look at that nice run there from Prince. I think it's uh, brilliant football all around. From the goalkeeper, from the cross. Once again, Rem Sangha pulling off the strings. He's been brilliant on that right wing. Now, Rohit, I'll tell you, I'm a big fan of the cut back through the legs. And that's exactly what Rem Sangha did. He waited for the opponent to stretch his legs, put it through it. And considering they haven't played too much together, Prince gambled. That's a sign of a good striker. He went towards the first post, got the connection right. But unfortunately, hit it straight to the goalkeeper, Van Lal, who made a super save. And they're enjoying themselves. The Mohammedan sporting fans definitely would love to take the three points back home. Well, uh, before the Monday morning blues kick in, why not just savour in the supremacy of your team who are right now pulling off a sensational game. Uh, this is not a good sight for Ivan. He spotted Prince. Great run from Prince now that you see it again. Ivan went for it. He slipped and has hurt his ankle. He might have rolled his ankle there. Instantly looks like he signalled to the bench and hopefully he can jog it off. If he can't, then this will be a big problem, Rohit, for Aizol because he has been the heart of their defence. 
And to be honest, with Ivan in it, and I think they are taking off Ivan. Yes, they have taken off Ivan, which introduces Gustavo Claudio da Silva into the mix, another Brazilian. So maybe they do have the defensive backup, yes. But how much can Gustavo deliver in the face of such insane pressure? That is going to be a point to talk about. Of course, Gustavo definitely can take the reins in the defense, but it's all about just accustoming, getting accustomed, rather, I beg your pardon, to this game, to the pace of the game. Because Mohamed and Sporting have got the ground, ground running very early in the first half. They've done the same in the second half. So for him to just quickly come into it and deal with the likes of Prince's physicality and Alexis Sanchez's speed won't be easy for Gustavo. And uh, now Mohamedan coming all the way from the left. Uh, it looked like it was once again Samad Ali Malik who wanted to keep Aizol FC at bay. And now Aizol desperately trying to cling on to the ball. Unfortunately, it was slightly more on the cusp. It looked like it was Lalrin Zuala. And it's going to be back in the control of Samad Ali Malik who gets in a quick throw, nice short pass and steered into the stride altogether of uh, Joseph. Joseph sends it even forward and now Mohamed and Sporting trying desperately to just go for that chase. However, that would fizzle out of play which will be a throw in in favour of Aizol FC. And this doesn't look good at all. There was a lot of strapping on that ankle for Ivan Maric and Mohamed and Sporting take it forward. Samuel, who can shoot this time into the stands. Would have been a resonating effort. In fact, uh, if Mohamed and Sporting could have got that in the back of the net, once again, Samuel showcasing his shooting flair. Uh, he just needed to keep the ball in the frame of the goal. Try and make it on target. Samuel has really shown some steep promise and Errol Akbay, he'll have to have or he'll need to have maybe a word with his team there. Another long goal kick uh, sent downtown eludes everyone but Mohamed and Sporting, uh, they're right up to the task. A bit of a tricky period in this game because Mohamed and Sporting want one more to get things a little more solidified as all of course are still in this and we speak about someone who can take control of the midfield or perhaps even going forward for as all FC they do have Fretz and Marshall who has played for Srinidhi Deccan in the past knows exactly what it means to play in the I League and now he has he, he definitely is an option as we see this foul from, yes it definitely was side, a bit of a push but also a bit of a slip there for Awiya. Uh, you were talking about the options that they have, uh, particularly the likes of Fretch and Marshall. They also have the likes of Sheikh Shahil and uh, alongside him Kim Kima can be a very good option. Kim Kima is a very experienced campaigner, he's uh, played a while in the Indian circuit and TKA Chinsa he's someone who's very young and very exciting but once again at times if nothing is going in your way maybe just throw in a bit of young blood into the mix and suddenly the entire dynamic the entire picture takes a paradigm shift so yes a lot of options still on the bench for Aizol FC as they keep on looking for the equalizer they keep on trying to probe uh, Mohamed and Sporting with all possible questions in their question bank and this is nice work however it looks like he's been clipped from behind this is going to be a free kick here in favor of uh, Aizol it's Lalrin Zuala who was brought down by Mir by Kasimov yeah many many fouls from Kasimov five to be precise but another opportunity from a set piece for Aizol that's what they have 
had to resort to Amavia stands over it not the best of deliveries could not even pass the first man which was Samad Ali Malik and the deliveries have to be better he was good in the first half if you're going to try and get an equalizer then you've got to be a little more precise when it comes to those set pieces nicely done it will be a black and white ball for the throw in Another thing that kind of surprised me right now for Aizol, they had three players on the wings, wherein they just had one player in the box. Ideally, if you're trying to go for a cross, two players are more than enough to create that support system that you're looking forward to. So maybe and just maybe, they can try and channelize that attacking flair in the box. That is well spotted, Rohit. Lots of fine tinkering will be required and will happen of course over the course of the season for all sides but what's important is to start off well and if Mohamed and Sporting can get an opening win here they will be delighted Aizol of course traveling away from home might have an eye maybe on a point which isn't too bad either here is Detol plays it back towards Joseph and they just like to rebuild once again. And also like a very nice uh, point that you just made Liam uh, where you said that a lot of fine tuning will be happening. You know we say in a marathon league like this the final product is the crucible that's forged out of fire and ice. But once again you know considering the first four games that we are witnessing the kind of gentry, the kind of speed, the kind of exchanges that we have seen, the kind of intensity that has continued till the very last minute of the game. Believe me, when the fine tunings happen, this is going to turn into a boiling cauldron of excellence and, and these are wonderful signs for Indian football. At the moment, uh, it looks like Marvin and Sporting, uh, they'll take their time. It was Zoding Liana with the throw-in. Owen oh, turns, sends the ball towards the central channel to Kasimov. Kasimov steers it slightly on the right side. A very staunch piece of defence uh, there from Aizol. Few short passes here in Yon. Just trying to calm the tempo down, trying to get the Aizol FC players out of that husk of theirs. Now moving forward, Mohammed is sporting but the run wasn't made by Alexis. Someone has stayed down. Referee asks him to get up and we can continue. Here is Gustavo. Haven't seen him thrown into the defensive side of things just yet. Mohamed and Sporting just losing a bit of that spark which they started the first, rather the second half with. With the current uh, positioning of Gustavo, it looks like that he's a wing back or a side back rather to be precise. So maybe and just maybe he's not the like for like replacement that's wonderfully done there and a nice forward ball here coming from Aizol. Wanted to go for a shot, kind of a pretty hasty attempt made by Aizol that somewhat took the ball away from them. A good sweeper keeping again by Van Lal. He's a good reader of the game. Here is Gustavo, smashes it forward. Don't really have too much of physicality up front to Aizol and this could be a chance now but it was a bit too much on that pass for Prince. Aizol FC just uh, playing all the way from the back, trying to knit together those short passes. But once again, the Mohammedan sporting defence, uh, that has been absolutely brilliant. And uh, they are not willing to give away an iota of space. Now they are trying to come from the right. They have a lot of space ahead of them. They are just waiting for some help as well. And it's very interesting, these two sides have met in the past, of course. I'll come back to that. There's a lot of space for Emsanga, like that has been throughout the game. But this time he can't get the pass out. 
He has another option. If he wants, he plays it towards Prince, who opened his foot up and aimed for that second post. He says it's a good pass, but he will know that he needs to bury chances like that one. I think he had all the time in the world to at least capture and take a stride. It's just that he wanted to be slightly artistic, wanted to place the ball. Again, a very good option, no doubts about that. But if you're trying to place the ball from that angle, ideally you'll find the goalkeeper in its way. So he needs to do better or needs to get a better angle if he has plans like that. Just putting my, boot, putting my striking boots on and thinking what Prince was on about there. He took one good shot before this which was saved. So this time he was thinking, okay, if I've got to beat the goalkeeper, I might have to find the corners instead of just putting his boot through it. This is a chance for Aizol. Perhaps a shooting opportunity, but it's over the top. So that's perhaps why he tried to place it as we take another look at this shot. Yeah, that was a wonderfully struck shot, nicely powered. But again, the direction, the height. When you're particularly going for these shots, it's very important that you try and drill them flatter instead of going underneath the ball. The moment you do that, well, we'll get back to that. You're talking about David Hamar. And uh, David Hamar will be taking the centre stage. And who will be making way for him? It's none other than Prince Opoku Agyeman. And you can hear the round of applause from the Mohammedan Sporting Faithful. You can hear the roars because it is David who has been sensational in the Calcutta Football League. 21 goals for Mohammedan Sporting. What a signing he's been. Of course, playing against his former side. It's been a good outing for Prince. He should have got a goal, but chances have been coming. Here is the chance. Alexis will take it forward. Goes for the nutmeg. Here is David again. Could have shot it first time. Decided not to. Holds it up. And keeps holding it and plays it backwards. And Mohammedan Sporting will have to build from behind again. Not the best of clearances, but somehow they've got it away. Have as all FC. Well, another wonderful sequence of play here from Mohammedan Sporting. And uh, now they will rely on those square passes. Nicely laid into that uh, stride. However, eyes all FC defense. I don't think they will be faced by an opportunity like that. Not really the best of clearances. High press football from Mohammedan Sporting. Unfortunately, uh, he couldn't really keep that run of his in check. Ends up fouling. Yeah, it is uh, Remsanga who commits the error. Fourth foul for M. Sangha. Quite a few of those coming in the attacking position, so he won't really mind. Here is Gustavo. Only two fouls from Aizol. Has felt like a little more. But a lot of them from home within Sporting, of course. Midway through this second half, it's still hanging in the balance, of course. In terms of the scoreline, it is 2-1 to Mohammedan Sporting. But you get the feeling that something's got to give Rohit. We might be seeing a goal in the next 10 to 15 minutes. And it's important as to which way that goal goes. Well, at the moment, uh, to be honest, Talian, there's just one way that looks open. And that's the moment in way. But once again, knowing eyes all FC, you can never write them off. Particularly with a slender lead like this. Eyes all FC can create anything out of thin air. And they are indeed magical. And believe me, if Aizol FC is on song, there will be very big teams who can come down crashing. I think the flag's gone up. Yes. Which means Aizol FC will have a chance to rebuild from the back and drive forward. Nice ball from Kasimov. But it looks like he was definitely straying offside. That's not the position you would like to take as a winger. You've got to stay onside because you can see the entirety of the defence and the offside line that they are playing. But slightly tired legs perhaps from Remsanga who has been really good. Brilliant turn 
once again and he has to be stopped by not one but two eyes all players and speaking of thin margins and victories we'll come back to that here is a chance again Gustavo misses the challenge it's played wide a little too wide there for Alexis who sets it up nicely the pass comes back in and it's a nice move from Mohammedan Sporting but the danger was snuffed out well, to be honest uh, if there's one thing that we should talk about Alexis is how in the second half instead of being central to that attacking sphere just taking that central route over and over again he shuffled constantly between the ranks that tells you his ability to take excessive workload talking about Alexis once again he's in the frame he's someone whom the ball somewhat gets attracted to nice cross comes in from the left the referee says it's all right that was a very gentle push yeah definitely not a foul referee has been in good positions and has let the play flow many times we have thought it was a foul but of course he has the best set of eyes in the house and he is allowing the play to progress and this is how it moves forward for eyes all but that final pass just not working for them Kasimov runs through he's got a lot of energy and creates a bit of space and now makes the ball for David who shuffles it wide Ramsanga with acres of space cuts inside goes on to his left foot that's a great block Kasimov again and it somehow evades the goal face and it will go out for a corner for Mohammedan Sporting another extraordinary sequence of events here by Mohammedan Sporting wonderfully laid it into the stride of Ramsanga Ramsanga shot was blocked well enough and then Kasimov trying to put in a crucial attempt towards the goal unfortunately it takes a deflection great block in fact there by Munez to start it off the number four the skipper of Aizol there he is just stood, st stood still and tall here is Alexis decent ball in chance for a shot from across the box and how about that for a save again from Van Lal against David emitting sparks of uh, sensational goalkeeping brilliance Van Lal Riyad Puya standing tall just not going to allow the opposition to try and get an easy way get an easy inroad into the goal brilliant brilliant instincts I'll tell you what Rohit David is showing the kind of form that he's been in 21 goals in the CFL and it's as if the ball is just attracted to him Alexis looks for another ball in Joseph is there as an option but he takes it short nicely cut out by Ramsanga decent ball in and this should be number three but David has been denied once again and he cannot believe it neither can I because Van Lal pulls out another super save yeah Van Lal proved to be the wizard of uh Aizol saying in the loudest of words there to David you shall not pass and it looks like David in fact Van Lal has pulled off another save <laughs> I think we were so caught up in that move that we kind of missed out here's a foul though the referee I think that is going to be the first yellow card of the evening and uh, who else than Alexis Gomez well he's been the thick of things he scored the first goal he's been he's assisted one and now he picks up one for the team as well it looks like he wants to be first at everything Rohit first assist first goal and now first yellow as well wasn't much in it you see a few more challenges but as the referee says it's an amalgamation of the other fouls and that gets him in the book Liam you just pointed out the first and everything there's another card another color of card that also <laughs> comes out I think he will definitely not like that neither will Mohammed and Sporting there comes a lovely cross though and wonderfully collected by Padam Chetri he's not really been tested in the second half this is the first time he had to come out of his line to collect a ball and he does that without uh, any fuss whatsoever as I said before Padam Chetri has got beautiful hands just collects that ever so nicely and Rohit earlier we were speaking about the fine margins and this 2-1 win or rather this 2-1 scoreline which might turn out to be a win for Mohammedan Sporting but as all 
in the last fixture that these two sides played one by one goal to nil and incidentally it was a former Mohammedan sporting player as we see this back pass straight into the hands of Van Lal who's been great it was a former Mohammedan sporting player in Henry Kisika who got that goal for Aizol so quite a few common players for these two teams by the looks of it well, Henry Kiseka is a name to be honest he's one particular player who really loves to score in the big games who loves to score in those dying embers he's somebody who's a very clutch player to be honest and you can't just rule him out because if he's there on the ground for 90 minutes he will have a significant impact on the game and this is where Padam Chetri will be important just keeping things calm for Mohammedan Sporting he gets the ball back here not the best of touches but then he does pass the test and now they look like they're moving into a bit of a shell here Mohammedan Sporting there's still 16 minutes to go we've got to be careful as they try to move things forward again you know to be honest uh, if you're trying to get into a shell against Aizol FC Aizol FC is one particular team who can be very unforgiving if they start finding their footing they can actually make you pay so I believe the best option the best resolution will always be to try and play your natural game and in fact they've been so expressive this is a nice run there by Aizol FC trying to use the left wing there comes the cross however it eludes everyone could have been a bit of trouble now Alexis gets to move it forward Plays it towards Kasimov. Super ball by him. A classy ball indeed. More like Klasimov. Too much on that for the run of Samuel from Remsanga. Those two know each other so well, of course. And the two eyes all boys just coming back to haunt their former side this evening. Well, classy move. I must say, it's not just Mohamedan knitting together a brilliant brand of play on the ground. You're knitting together some exquisite word play as well, Liam. And no wonder he has been somebody of class. He's been someone who's been knitting the authority for Mohamedan sporting. And you need a figure like that. If somebody's leading your defence, this, like, this looks like a decent ball. There comes the cross and it eludes almost everyone just to fall into the stride. Well, that should be a foul. That has to be a foul. I mean, Amoya, he was on his way forward and as a result, there was no other way that Mohamedan could have actually stopped it. So Samuel, the goal scorer, also takes a booking for his team. And he's just helping his friend there because they do know each other. Went for him once and then twice. Samuel, with a professional foul, if there ever was one, he knew he had to bring down his opponent and it looks like he should be okay in fact somebody else has gone for a bit of treatment but Samuel will get a yellow card to join Alexis in the referee's book it looks like it's uh, Lal Rinzuala who's actually gone down as well but he's back on his feet that is the good sign you know once again as you were pointing out in the earlier games playing for almost what uh, 90 minutes of football and trying to be on your feet trying to showcase your talent your flair consistently at a very high level I think it's not easy for you to play without any cramps or pulls so and and to be honest again winter is still to come down here so the temperatures yes they are cooler they are they are pleasant but when you're playing football at such a high tier level, I don't think there's anything called the calm and the coolness. It's all about pressure. It's all about intensity, speed and sweat. Yeah, you will see a bit of cramping here and there, especially because it is the first game. Once these players get into the groove of playing two or three matches, then that might not come into play. But... The intensity has definitely been there and this man, Kasimov, has been at the centre of it all. If he's not playing a pass, he's making a challenge. If he's not making a challenge, he's calling out to someone. Definitely one of the leaders that you can identify on the pitch for Mohammed in Sporting. 
undoubtedly. There's no second thoughts on that. And I think Mohamedan Sporting, the best part about them, will get back to the best part. Aizol may have one of their own as they are playing those short passes, trying to get some space. It looks like the referee didn't really know where to go. Eventually, a long cross comes in, nicely chested down. However, when this man remains in the hunt for Mohamedan, he goes by the name of Joseph. You will not see those chances creating pretty or those chances finding its right destination. It looks like the attack continues and eventually the shot comes in. That's jammed off a defender. And Joseph, once again, as you were speaking about him, Rohit, just makes another nice block. Offers a lot of solidarity to this black and white brigade. Hango plays it towards Alexis. And now Remsanga to Samuel. Back to Remsanga. Takes another touch. And then it has been parried away by Van Lal for what will be another quarter for Mohammedan Sporting. A bit of an excessive touch towards the end for the winger. Well, absolutely on that. I mean, look at Rem Sangha. He's being tirelessly brilliant. He continued to run on that right wing of his. And the kind of football that we've seen from him, to be honest, he's going to be the seed of Mohammedan's future as well. If they can nurture him for sure. And Alex is, uh, is once again the man shouldered with the responsibility of trying to take that corner. Chips it into the mix uh, opportunity. However, it looks like Aizol has it under control. Ten minutes to play in Nahati Stadium. Adinga takes a throw. Nicely kept there by Remsanga who finds himself on the left wing as well. David loses possession and gives away a throw this time round. And in the history of these two sides meeting in the I-League, Mohammedan Sporting with one win, Aizol winning two of those. So Mohammedan Sporting will definitely want to make it 2-2. There has been one draw as well in between these two. Absolutely. I mean, uh, both these sides, again, knowing the fact that they've been in the Indian football circuit for a while, the kind of encounters that we have seen, the kind of thrill that these two teams have produced over the years, that is indeed sensational. This one goes out of uh, play though. It's going to be a throw-in. And the beauty of that, Rohit, as you mentioned, is that every year in the I-League, we do have a couple of new teams coming forward. That will definitely be a foul from Gustavo. On David, who has been superb since coming on, could have got a couple of goals. And this year, we will also get a few new friendly rivalries with the likes of Intakashi and Namdheri coming in. And of course, Shillong Lajong also coming back in. So there will be lots of new age rivalries to speak about. That's a nice ball in, taken down by Samuel. And here's Alexis again. Another ball played in, but not the best of ones. Well, I believe uh, you were talking about Namdari. I'll be very excited to see Namdari play. Right now, the Mohammedan is knitting together an excellent brand of, an excellent brand of playing, to be honest. Aizol FC barely clawing that ball away. And now they can be on their way for a break. However, it's not easy to go past Mohammedan at the moment. They are consistent. And now another nice ball that's being played into the stride of Aizol FC. Just before they could collect and drive forward, Alexis was all set. And it looks like Alexis has committed another foul. He's somewhat living dangerously on the <laughs> precipice. Maybe and just maybe. And Vishernishov knows that Alexis' job has been done. So maybe he can also try and sub him, get someone else on the ground. Uh, and uh, at the moment, it looks like K. Lalrinfella, the goal scorer for Aizol, he was the one who was clipped from behind. And one of the reasons why Alexis is still being kept is because the margin is way too slender. Just that solitary goal. So if by hook or by crook, if Aizol FC can find the back of the net, if they can restore parity, then of course the services of Alexis Nahuel Gomez will be imperative to Mohammedan Sporting. The thing about Alexis is that he cannot stay out of the game. So that's why... You're right, Chernyshov may think about pulling him out. 
but he's the kind of player who won't want to be taken out as well. So I'm sure he will be slightly cautious of his next foul. That's a decent ball in, nicely negotiated by the likes of Zoding Liana, who has had a very good game, very solid game as he always does. And uh, since you're talking about Alexis, we'll get back to that after this throw though. Uh, this looks like Aizol just trying to get something into the box. The throw was uh, quickly taken and Marvin and Sporting clearing their lines. You're talking about Alexis a few moments ago. They still have a couple of impressive names in that uh, substitute of theirs. So I think maybe and just maybe, particularly with AD Gabriel Hernandez Padilla, the man from Honduras. Uh, if he can also be introduced, he's also a forward. So maybe a like-for-like -like substitution. This almost allowed Aizol to carve an opportunity for themselves. But wonderfully done there by Joseph once again. And now Mohamedan Sporting is on a move of their own. They're trying to use the left wing. Not really the best of crosses. But what Aizol does is they trade it away for a corner. And suddenly out of nowhere a yellow card came out. And another big name... <laughs> for Aizol and their tempers are flaring at the moment. I think that's very good refereeing as the official went back towards Gustavo, gave him a yellow card because of a challenge. It was this challenge. That's a poor one on David trying to clatter him and take him out. Referee spots that, allows the play to continue via an advantage and then brings it back and gives Gustavo a yellow card. So very good job there by Joy Shing Tumli. And we see a couple of changes taking place. It's time for Remsanga to come off. What a game he has had. And it looks like Samuel will also be coming off. Two of them playing really well. And Sheikh Fayaz will also come on along with Tanmoy Ghosh. Well, the introduction of Sheikh Fayaz, uh, he was touted as a young sensation when he started and uh, since then, he has evolved in the ground. He has evolved uh, in the sides. Most importantly, Sheikh Fayaz brings in a very exquisite brand of speed along with him. So if he can continue with that, and more importantly, with his placement, he can be a star for Mormon in Sporting as well. And once again, Alexi is uh, shouldered with the responsibility of whipping that corner in. There comes the corner and... Uh, Van Lal, he has been standing tall over and over again, comes to the deliverance of Aizol for the umpteenth time in the game. How many times has he come across and done that, made amends, you would say, for that initial mistake, allowing a goal for Mohamed in Sporting, the first one of the game. Now that eighth corner, which Alexis will go and take again. As I said, you cannot keep him out of discussions well he's one man who really likes to be involved and involved in a wonderful way there comes the corner once again a bit of an emasculated header there but Van Lal Ria the kind of form that he is in I don't think uh, that would have bothered him anyway yeah, it's great to see how he's grown over the game a very good short stopper of course and just being able to hold his own in this first I-League encounter for Aizol. Possession with the home side, 60-40 for Mohamed in Sporting. 13 fouls as well from them as compared to 3 from Aizol. But still Rohit, 2-1 is definitely not safe. And this is when Aizol should push forward. They've got nothing to lose. You might as well lose 3-1. But at least try to go for the second goal and get... An all-important one point. Very rightly, very rightly said, Liam, because uh, this is a league. So, yes, one may say that maybe the goal difference could have been better. But to be honest, a goal difference of a solitary goal, at least thinking about that in the very first game makes no sense. So, yes, Aizol can increase the numbers up front. Maybe try and take the risk. It's understandable that Mohamedan Sporting is a very, very belligerent side. And it looks like they have been given a free kick. At a pretty decent juncture as well. So maybe in just maybe Aizol will be fancying their chances from the free kick. Yes, it's exactly where they have been trying to get 
a lot of their chances from again it's Alexis who gets tangled and this is the change I was asking for Fred said Marshall comes in he's someone who can shoot from a distance he can get into decisive areas and also as his name suggests Marshall the midfield let's see what comes of this one well once again a familiar face here for that free kick uh, for Aizol FC it's going to be Amoya can Amoya create another sensational free kick or an opportunity for Aizol to latch on to this will be a historic moment if he can there comes the free kick opportunity rattles the woodwork though danger still not over finally Mohamedan can now breathe and go forward as well what a sensational chance created by Aizol we always said that a 2-1 lead is not enough and Mohamedan Sporting finding that out the hard way that is another, that is another challenge Aizol will keep moving it forward a bit of space here and a shot, a decent shot, but over the top. And now a sigh of relief all around Nehati Stadium. Because a few seconds ago, there was a big opportunity for Aizol. We'll come back to that one. But for now, that was the shot which was over the top. Well, well, well. Surprises here for the fans in Mohamedan Sporting. In the dying embers of the game as we now head to the extra minutes that will be added on. It is going to be a crucial, crucial spell of play for Aizol FC. They are suddenly, they have suddenly sprang forth to life. And what a timing to get into the right frame. Eight minutes of additional time. Which means, yeah, it is going to be 480 seconds of exotic football. I'm not too sure where the eight minutes have come from. Yes, they have been a few substitutions and injuries but eight more minutes maybe even ten because of the injury now to Maximov rather to Kasimov I beg your pardon but he looks like he will be all right they definitely need him in these last few minutes but what a chance that was for Aizol it hit the woodwork and they have just about stayed in this game credit to them especially because of the goalkeeping of one lal and now a bit of space for David Gustavo does well he's got to be careful of course because he's already got a yellow well uh, eight staggering minutes is uh, how long we see these two teams in action of course there can be a lot of drama still remaining in this game particularly now with Aizol uh, FC bursting forth to life and the moment in Sporting still on the chase, but they will be denied. However, the ball doesn't really go as far as uh, Aizol would have wanted. Moment in Sporting now coming from the right, trying to create some space, maybe a cross as well. There comes the cross, they'll have a corner. This looks like a very positive spell of play. Sheikh Fayaz, the incoming substitute, trying to create something for his team here. As you said, Rohit, when he came on, that is what Sheikh Fires is known for. A bit of a nervous energy in Nahati Stadium, especially after that ball struck the woodwork on the other end. Alexis comes forward to take another corner. Sheikh Fayaz being held on to. David goes short. They might just take it short. And that's exactly why there is a defender there, Ramsanga, to try and stop it. Alexis tries to treadle one through and then cross but there was absolutely no space for him. At the moment Aizol FC will try and take everything in their advantage. A change here. Mohamed Irshad, we were talking about uh, his uh, prowess. We were talking about how Mohamed Irshad can definitely be a game changer as well. It's just that he takes a bit of time to come on. And he is going to make way for Angu. Angu has had a very tiring game, to be honest. But he's actually been extremely effective. Look at the welcome that he receives. I think it's been a very good game from Angu. Got an assist as well for the goal towards Alexis. As Sheikh Fayaz moves forward. Oh, and that's a... Uh, Miss kick, but somehow found an Aizol player, which will be fine for Van Lal. 
Here comes Fayaz again. Always active on the right hand side. Plays it towards Kasimov. Rishad looking for the 1 2. Won't get it though. But Mohammedan Sporting can move it forward. Alexis will want to keep the ball in these areas and he does really well. Skips past Joseph. Has a couple of other players but fits it in there for Tanmoy Ghosh. And now Mohammedan Sporting just focused on keeping the ball at their feet. Eyes all, however. They are also relentless. They are also trying their very best to go forward with an opportunity. However, they've given the ball away at a very critical juncture. Mohammedan Sporting can drive forward. They are looking for help in space. David did not have too many options. He did have Alexis though, who just before this avoided making any challenge Alexis. So he knows that he is treading on a fine line. And in the last few seasons, Rohit Mohammedan Sporting have been quite composed. As we see this ball played through, very good piece of defending there. They have been quite composed. They've won quite a few titles including the Durand Cup as well. So they know how to put a game to bed. Here is Fayaz trying to put the game to bed. He puts it across goal. A touch from Van Lal and then the clearance. And they're just about hanging on by a thread here is all. And it's all thanks to one man. Well, Van Lal Riyad Puya, he may be the tragic hero of his side. But what a heroic showdown has this been from him. Look at this once again. Had he not got that touch, that was clearly on goal. I mean, just touch from any part of the body and that would have gone into the back of the net. He has been a thorn for David. Because since David has come on, he has looked to score quite a few times. Van Lal not allowing him to do so. Here is Fayaz, plays it backwards. It will be interesting to see where they go with this one. That's a very nice touch inward from... Tanmoy back towards Alexis. Tanmoy again looks for a cross and will get another corner. How many corners have we seen today for Mohammed in Sporting? And they keep on getting higher. 11th corner for Mohammed in Sporting. Just tells you how extraordinary their attacking unit has been. Tanmoy came on recently. Sheikh Fayaz once again. A very mercurial player to try and contain him. someone who will not let you breathe tries to keep the ball in control just chips it slightly forward there however Izol FC has wrested possession of the ball it's just that they are not finding a way forward Mohammedan Sporting has been brilliant in terms of pressing and that is exactly what has helped them to take the sting back in their favor that we saw from Izol a few moments ago yeah, they don't have too much time here, Aizol. They've been forced backwards and this is why Tanmoy and Ilshad have been doing well. Tanmoy's block almost finds its way into the back of the net and he's shown so much of energy here. The local lad who has spent a lot of time playing in the Maidan in Kolkata has also had a bit of time in Gokulam, Kerala. But this could be the season where he really makes a big influence for Mohammed in Sporting. Good energy from him as well as we go into the final minute of the eight that has been added on. Can Aizol somehow get an equaliser? This is the chance but Alexis, even in this minute, Rohit coming back and defending. It has been absolutely brilliant. I think we were talking about his workload, we were talking about his capability to try and keep the ball away from the opposition and then get something of his own that is a lovely piece of work yeah alexis once again at the in the thick of things it's not exactly alexis can be a chance goal scoring opportunity tries to sneak it through the legs of van lal riyad puya but it's not to be and it was david hamar who continues to be absolutely brilliant but at the same time van lal riyad puya he's proven equal to the task 18 shots from Mohammed and Sporting, nine of them on target, a corner though, as we head towards the final minute of play. My word, what a save again from the keeper, Van Lal. David has been denied a hat-trick 
It's as simple as that, but he should have finished that one. Probably the best chance of all. And he created it himself. It looks like it will be a corner. Good decision from the referee. It went off a red shirt. And if Mohamed and Sporting can keep the ball in this juncture, then it should be the end of the game. Alexis has it. He will keep it there. Fayaz will help him. Two experienced campaigners. And that is that. Mohamed and Sporting with a loud roar in Nahati Stadium will take the three points to start off their I-League campaign. Goals from Lal Mohan Puya and Gomez were enough for the Black and White Brigade to get the win over Azol FC. Well, the Highlanders uh, did put in everything that they could. Unfortunately, the effort was not enough. And uh, they went forward to hit an almost unbreakable wall. Well, kind of uh, despair for Aizol FC for sure. But I think they will take heart from the fact that they also came forward looking or going all guns blazing at a team like Mohamedan Sporting. Oh yes, eventually it was a very good game. Highly competitive. Towards the end, let's not forget that Aizol hit the woodwork. Made it very difficult for Mohamedan Sporting themselves to score a third. And this is how the match statistics have lined up at the end of the 90. 60% ball possession. 18 shots from Mohamedan Sporting. 9 on target, which means that 7 saves were made by Van Lal. 6 shots from Aizol, just the one on target. 1 hitting the woodwork as well. 14 fouls from the Black and White Brigade. 3 from Aizol. 2 yellow cards for Mohamedan Sporting and one for the visitors. And uh, look at the number of shots that Mohamedan Sporting unloaded. 18 of them. David Lal and Sangha with four. Samuel Lal Puya scored a goal. And then Prince took three shots as well. Kasimov was brilliant with a couple of them. Lal and Sangha, what a talent down that right wing. Joseph, just that one shot. And eventually, Ansuang Luang was uh, also sensational. Talking about uh, Aizol, Lalrin Zuala led the charge with a couple of shots. One of them were definitely uh, in on the frame but not really on target. And then Lal Chwak Moia, Joseph Lalwin Mima, K. Lalwin Fela scored that goal for Aizol. Eventually before R. Lalton Moia scored that or took that solitary shot. 14 fouls from Mohamed in Sporting. Kasimov with five of them. Remsanga with four and one apiece for the rest of the Mohamedan Sporting players. Lots of action in their game for sure. Lots of shots, lots of saves which have been enforced by them onto the keeper and of course lots of fouls as well but they won't mind because they take the important three points home. Well uh, just those three fouls from Aizol FC. The Silva, Lal Sangha and A. Lal Ruchana with those uh, a foul apiece. A brilliant game of football finally meets its end where Mohamed and Sporting logging three full points will be heading back home with smiles blooming on their visage. We'll now let you enjoy the highlights and uh, this is how Mohamed and has gone forward in the second half. This was a crucial save that was pulled off by Van Lal. Once again, a closer look at this. Lal Ransanga doing a wonderful job. And this is Prince trying to find the back of the net. Eyes all as well. Uh, did come forward on a few occasions. Another sensational ball from the left. However, it was uh, not to be. Once again, the cross coming in, but well cleared. Yeah, Alexis was very involved. David, of course, had a few chances when he came on and the star of the show had to be, in fact, the two of them, David and Van Lal, who made so many saves. Alexis was involved in quite a few tussles. That one with Joseph, which gave him a yellow card. This one was an obvious yellow for Samuel as he swiped out Amavia. And this was that chance. I think it came off Gustavo and Joseph. It hit the woodwork. But... That was enough to put a bit of a scare into Mohamed in Sporting. Fayaz came on and did really well. Another touch from Van Lal. And with that, 
celebrations in Nahati Stadium for Andre Chernyshov and his side. And that is all from Nahati at the end of an incredible weekend of I-League football. It's Mohamedan Sporting who win over Izol FC by two goals to one. From my co-commentator Rohit Ganguly and myself, Liam Bain, thank you for watching and join us again tomorrow for more action in the I-League.